Welcome to the Toy Rewind Podcast with your hosts, the Brothers Newland. Now, let's talk toys. Buddy, I am Michael. I'm John. And I'm Andrew. And uh, you're on the Toy Rewind podcast. Hope you uh, realized what you were listening to before you actually started. Um, because we have a, this one's going to go fast. I think it's going to go fast. It's going to go in a one lane all the way around the track. Not going to deviate, except when it comes to a cross pattern and it changes to the other lane and then changes back. Yeah, we're talking about slot cars this week. Um, and slot cars have a lot of history. They go, uh, how far back do they go, Michael? Um, way back to the 1910s. Oh, wow. That was a lot further, further than what I thought did, they would go back. Did, did they have electricity back then? I didn't realize they had electricity. Yeah, it was still kind of a new, new thing to people. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, Hey, electric, let's put it on a car. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're talking about, we're talking about slot cars. It's going to be a fun week. We have, uh, we actually have a little bit of history with this one ourselves having, a, a nice slot car track that we had in the early nineties. So, um, did a lot of research on that, found a lot of stuff. Um, I want, I want it back, but, uh, so we'll get into that. But John, before we get into that, I do still have a piece, piece of that track. Yeah. Oh yeah. We still have a piece. It does not look the same as it did when we first got it. Um, but <laughs> we had it customized <laughs> <laughs> by which one of us we don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, John, uh, run us through our socials real quick. All right, check us out on our website, toyrewindpodcast.com. Uh, you can e- email us, toyrewindpodcast at gmail.com. Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch are all Toy Rewind Pod. Facebook and YouTube, Toy Rewind Podcast. Uh, we do stream our Toy Box showcases to YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch on that. Uh, play Podcast Bingo, of course. Get in the game, show us our, your cards and stuff, but it's podcastbingo.com backslash Toy Rewind. And, of course, we've got our collector showcases that we're doing with uh, Geek Together on their channel and our channel as well. But uh, times have changed. We are now on Wednesdays. Yep, yep. And uh, be sure you follow us because uh, we're going to let you know when and where those are going to happen, even if they do move around a little bit or whatever. Um, or we skip some weeks. We, we're, we're still working all that out. Um, had a lot of fun doing them. Hopefully you caught our last episode where we talked to Christina from Geek Together and Deathly Cute. And at this point, maybe even got the uh, the Dahlia that she dropped a little bit on, on us during that episode. That was the, uh, the color change Dahlia that she was making. So. All right. Um, this is a, this is an interesting, we, it's time for our fun for all question. And uh, we didn't talk about this before. Um, So this is just kind of interesting. We're just going to throw it in here. It's going to be a fun one. Um, What type of dog breed would you be if you were a dog? Hmm. And just silence. Like nobody's ready. You have to think about that one. Uh, (laughs) What kind of breed? I don't know. I'd be a Labrador, I guess, or some kind of mix. Just a mutt. Michael's a mutt. I'm a mutt. All right. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> uh, I would go with uh, more of a pit bull. That's what I think I would be. I, I could see that, John. I would want to be a pit bull, but I'd be a smaller pit bull, like right. the one that just kind of hangs out. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you've 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 got the, the the size. You're you're a little smaller and bulkier there. Yeah. You know? okay. So you've got the broader shoulders. I definitely see that. Um, Michael is a mutt. I could see that. That would work. <laughs> um, I honestly, I don't know what I would be. Um, I'd want to be a pit bull. So I'd you probably be. Chihuahuas. No, I don't think I'd be a yapping <laughs> chihuahua. Um, I know whatever, whatever breed I would end up being, I would be like my dog, Leia, who sleeps all day long. I would sleep all the time <laughs> because that's the, that's the life, right? Just getting to sleep all the time. 
So she sleeps on one end of the couch and the cat sleeps on the other end of the couch. And then they wake up and look at each other and then they go back to sleep. Like there's, <laughs> there's a turf war happening, but it's not a very like physical turf <laughs> war. It's not like they're going to actually get up and fight each other or anything. They're just going to look at each other. So yeah. as long as you stay on your side, I'll stay on my side. Right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Another thing we got going right now um, is our toy brackets. So we have at the time of this recording, we've gone through our round of 32 and we've just gone through our round of 16. I just tallied up all of the, the round of 16 and we have what will be our round of eight and it'll get posted today. So, um, at the, like I said, at the time of recording of this, you're looking at Micro Machines versus Nerf, Masters of the Universe versus Star Wars, the G1 Transformers line against the TMNT line, and then Legos versus board games. So, by the time you're actually listening to this, that will be solved, and we will be actually... Yeah, we'll actually be posting the championship game or match at that point. So we'll have already gone through the final four, and you'll be you'll be knowing what the uh, the championship is. So we don't even know what that is. We're recording a little bit early, um, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed that. When we do the next podcast, we will uh, be able to announce the winners. So a lot's going to happen between now and then. Um, it is it is getting serious right now. It is. I was just about to ask you guys what you think about this the the final eight that are here that are here. So out of all the, all the 32 that we started with, are these the eight that you guys thought were going to end up here? Um, anybody that you kind of see as a, as winning and that you didn't think was going to win anybody you're missing? No, I think, I, I don't know. I knew around a 16 would be pretty close, but I think this is going to be even closer. It's going to be <laughs> tough trying to, like I said, was it Transformers and Turtles against each other? And then, yeah. yeah. Masters of the Universe versus Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. That's a that's a pretty good one. Yeah, I think all I mean, these are kind of expected to be where they are right now. They're all big lines. So the only one that I can say that I, I kind of, I, I, I don't, I, or, I knew that this was going to happen. I knew that board games were going to make it pretty high. Um, I really wasn't sure when they were going up against the Ghostbusters how that was going to to work right. its way out, mm -hmm. and it was it was probably the closest one we've had so far. Um, it doesn't surprise me that board games won. Everybody loves a board game, but I just didn't know that was probably the one that I was like, I don't know how that can go, and it would probably be the only one that if Ghostbusters had won and they were going up against Legos, <laughs> that I'd have been like, yeah, of course that's how that's going to go, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, but um, also we had in in the round right before this, we had the Transformers against Mask. That was a, you know, um, I had a pretty good feeling the Transformers were going to win that, but <laughs> um, Mask could have won it. They come back. I mean, I know Joey's a huge Mask fan. He, mm -hmm. I'm surprised he didn't make 35 accounts to, uh, <laughs> to be able to vote on it. So um, there's that. Then you've got, uh, sorry, I knew Micro Machines were going to beat the Care Bears. Um, the visionaries and the nerf that was a pretty close one, too. Yeah, um, but I just I, I felt like nerf was going to come out, so that was a uh, tough one for me because I kind of I really like the visionaries, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. the other close one that I saw was the Voltron against Star Wars, and Voltron won that one, or I'm um, sorry, Star Wars won that one, but I, that could have also gone both ways for me, also, depending on who was showing up to vote. Um, it was not close. Um, Star Wars like demolished Voltron, but you know, I could have seen it going both ways had it gone the other way. So, but we're down to our last eight. Well, like I said, we'll be posting those today, so you'll be able to vote on those. And by the time you listen to this, we'll be down to our final championship game or match between um, two of these eight that we've got left. So, yeah, hope you guys are enjoying that. We're gonna find out who's number one. Uh, by the way, I have updated the website so. We do have just the two things on our on our list now for the next one that we're getting ready for in you know thirty ish weeks or whatever. Um, but right. we do have match again today. Yeah, right now they all match. Uh, I have a feeling they will match after today. But they're still going to match. Um, but we've got Nintendo and Rainbow Bright on there, so go check that out if you're interested on on that. It's not quite as interesting now as it will be in you know ten weeks mm -hmm. when uh, we've got a lot more on there. But uh, <clears throat> it's a lot of fun. So. 
All right. With that, I think that is, uh, I think we're time to start talking about some slot cars. All right. Some slot cars. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that's my cue there. Uh, so slot cars, they, uh, they consist of a motor driven chassis, uh, with a car body and generally a pin that drops into a slot on the track. Uh, there's uh, metal rails uh, that carry electrical current uh, that connects to the, the metal contacts on the bottom of the car, um, giving the motor a power to run. <clears throat> so that's kind of the general uh, thing of the, 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 uh, slot, the slot car itself. Um, it goes around the track. Um, you've got different kind of tracks that, like Andrew said, sometimes they crisscross. Sometimes they, uh, they've got some others that, that are some newer ones that, that go by that are digital that, that can switch lanes and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> but they generally all have that one pin that drops in that slot to keep it on the track. So, um, so <clears throat> a little bit of history, uh, way back in 1912, uh, Lionel, the electric comp uh, train company, uh, produced the first commercial slot cars. Uh, these drew power from a toy train rail sunk into a, a wide slot uh, between two other rails on the track. Um, production was, was then discontinued in 1915, so these guys only lasted three years. Um, but they all usually had a, a rail on both sides to keep them on the track. So um, <clears throat> Then over the next 40 years, uh, several other electrically uh, powered commercial products came and went, and up until the late 1950s, nearly all powered toy vehicles were guided by raised rails, either at the wheels or at the, on the lane, center of the lane, um, or the edge. You know, if you've got that center of the lane, if you've ever been to Six Flags driving little little Model A cars, they got that little lane, that little <laughs> rail right there in the middle of the track that keeps you from going off the track. That's kind of what right. these these were kind of like. Uh, back in the 50s, up until the 1950s or late 50s. Uh, so by the mid 1950s, there were clubs set up to, to race these rail cars. Uh, slot cars, uh, slots in the track came about because the obtrusive appearance of the rails and they're blocking the rear wheels of the cars when sliding through corners uh, became disadvantages. So uh, usually cruising through the corners of the tracks and stuff you can kind of slide the rear tires back and it'll it kind of gives it more tracks or more speed uh, if you got that rail down the middle of it those back tires hit that rail and kind of slow the car down so <clears throat> they come up with putting the the little slot in the track with the pin in the slot to get rid of that rail <clears throat> so um uh, once this was realized uh, after debating for years which was better uh, the rail systems went by the wayside. So they finally figured out, hey, the, the getting rid of the, of the rails makes the cars go a little faster. So they're not there to, <laughs> to, to be in the way. So in uh, 1957, uh, many models converted its 130th scale racers uh, to electricity, creating scale electric slot guided model models. And then uh, Victory Industries introduced their VIP line. <clears throat> Uh, both lines included versatile sectional track for home rate for the home racer. Uh, VIP produced sports cars and accessories leaning towards a model roadways theme, uh, kind of like the model trains and stuff like that. Um, a lot of people, you know, they set up the old diorama and everything for uh, for train. Um, so uh, that's kind of what they went towards. And then Scale Electric uh, more successfully focused on Grand Prix racing. So that kind of that's kind of the way it, it, the majority of the the cars went to is that racing theme. <clears throat> right. So as scale electric uh, became an instant hit, American hobbyists and manufacturers were adapting 124 scale model, car models to slots. Um, and British American engineer Derek Brand uh, developed a tiny vibrating motor, uh, small enough to power. Uh, model cars roughly in scale with HO and OO electric trains. So he came up with a very, with a small one to, to get even smaller, uh, like one sixty fourth or one thirty second scale cars is kind of what we're looking at on that. <clears throat> so 1959 Playcraft division of Matoy uh, produced these motors in the UK. And a year later, Aurora plastic corporation uh, released these with huge success in the U S 
The tiny cars fascinated the public and their cost and space requirements were better suited to the average consumer than the large, larger scales. Uh, the, and only a couple years, Scale Electric's 132nd scale cars and Aurora's model motoring HO line had set off the slot car craze of the 1960s. So it, it just blew up there at the end of the 50s, uh, beginning of the 60s. The whole thing went, went crazy. I mean, uh, they, so didn't, this, they didn't have video games yet. So, no. I mean, yeah, that, of yeah. course it would blow up. Yeah. So this, this was largely a U.S. phenomenon, but commercially it was a huge one. Uh, 1963, after a million and a half had been produced um, of the uh, the vibrating motors uh, that brand made, Aurora replaced the, the trouble-prone vibrating motor with an innovative flat commuter or pancake motor, also created by Derek Brand. Uh, so he kind of made an even better one than what he created the first time. And this, uh, this probably... Uh, was what probably the, the best selling slot car in history came out of this. The Aurora Thunderjet 500 was born that, that with that new motor. So, uh, Faller, which is a German toy company, <clears throat> produced this motor for sale in the year in Europe. And competing companies tried in vain to match the speed and reliable reliability of uh, Derek Brand's design. Uh, the Thunderjets and their improved versions, the uh, AFX models sold in the tens of millions, com completely dominating the HO markets uh, for almost a decade until challenged by Tyco in the early 1970s. So uh, by the late 70s, the slot car boom was dwindling and, and the market returned to the more serious racing hobbyists uh, with local and national racing organizations evolving to set standards and rules for different classes and competition. So they so out of this they they got a lot of different clubs and stuff where you go and actually race these against against other uh, racers. So uh, technological advancements brought much higher speeds in all scales with faster motors, better tires, uh, traction magic magnets to hold the cars down on the curves. Um, though some of the older enthusiasts thought the slot car racing the slot cars had become too specialized for the casual hobbyist. And remember, the more primitive cars is not so fast, but more fun. <clears throat> in the 1990s, computer designs and 3D printing helped create much more detailed and authentic models than the simple shapes and rudimentary graphics of the boom of the 60s. In addition, newly manufactured replicas of Aurora's HO slot cars of the 60s and 70s appeared on the market, and consumers gained the option of racing either the modern high-tech cars or the more basic designs of an earlier time so um <clears throat> some of the other aspects of this you know the tracks the first tracks from scale electric and vip were molded rubber and folded metal uh but the modern tracks fall into two different main categories uh you got your plastic tracks and then you got your rooted tracks so the plastic tracks are, are more common that's kind of what you see you know your home home sets and stuff they're they they're in sections you can put them together and then you can change up the track layout and all that kind of stuff so uh they're inexpensive and easy to assemble uh like i said the design of the course can easily be changed um the only thing about these is the joints in between each section of the track um make it a rough running surface and then the electrical connections between them are also drops uh, the voltage drops at each section on that <clears throat> whereas routed tracks have the entire track made from one one piece or a couple pieces of sheet material so it's just one big uh piece you don't uh it doesn't have any different sections so uh right. power was that Andrew? Oh, i just said right yeah okay yeah um so power for most slot cars come from a power pack that contain a transformer uh, which reduces high voltage house current to a safe 12 to 20 volts. And then the controllers, <clears throat> controllers vary the car speed by modulating the voltage <clears throat> from the power pack. Uh, these are usually handheld and attached by wires to the track. You know, early rail car tracks used uh, telegraph type keys. And the first commercial uh, race sets from 1957 used handheld controllers with the thumbs button. Uh, both these were either on or off, so it wasn't you couldn't really modulate the speed. You could just go really fast or or stop 
and it just yeah. goes and then when you let off the full, button it slows full down feet, full full force to get to that curve then you gotta uh, yeah you gotta let off, the, let off the button. <laughs> you um, have to be good at that or you're gonna spin her out on the curve yeah so it wasn't until 1965 yeah. when uh rusket uh, another company toy company introduced uh, the trigger operated pistol grip controller uh, which became the standard controller style for both race sets and serious hobbyists. Uh, this has remained uh, pretty much the same up till now, up to the present day. So uh, <clears throat> that is pretty much all I got on the history of those. Um, so, so we all did a little bit of looking into this before this episode, talking about the speed of these things. Um, obviously, uh, these little cars are going, they can go pretty fast. Um, we saw a couple different things. So I saw one that was, what was it? The one thirty second scale that was possibly hitting a hundred miles an hour. Um, right. now we don't know if that is scale miles an hour or not. We could not confirm that or not. Um, honestly, the way that I've seen these things go, I could see them going hundred miles an hour. Um, that's, that's just you know, the size of them. Um, we did say, what was it, the HO scale one that was 900 and something scale miles per hour. We did see that. Correct. And yeah, that, yeah. that came out to be just right at 31, 31, 31 miles an hour. Yeah. So um, maybe the hundred miles an hour or not, maybe that's, that's just me dreaming. I don't know. Um, but um, now we do, I, as I mentioned before, we do have some history with these specifically because we had a fun set. So um, I'm going to show this. This is the Canyon of Doom set that we had. Um, this is obviously one. Well, I just found a picture of this one, but uh, this is what we had. We got it in 90, early 90s. This came out in 1991, um, <clears throat> was a fun set. It was kind of an Indiana Jones type set um, yeah. <laughs> that it's got like a bunch of different um, things like from like Canyon of Doom or not Canyon of Doom, uh, Temple of Doom. Um, so, but it's, it's got these two Jeeps. Michael has one um, that he showed just a minute ago. It's now black, even though yeah, the original is, is it missing a tire on the back there? Yeah. It's yeah. missing, missing one of the rubber tires on it, but the other three are still there. Uh, this was the red one. Cause you can still oh. see the, the red underneath the, yeah, body. I was about to ask. I thought it was the red one. I thought that's what you had told us. Yeah. So this yeah. track, this one, this one was a whole lot of fun. So here's a good picture of the two cars. Um, but that's what the red one, if you're watching uh, the red one, um, it's uh, these are just kind of, I don't know, not quite the uh, uh, Jurassic <clears throat> Park Jeeps, you know, but they're some, some Jeeps. They, this is red one. It's got four by four on the front of it. Of course, it's all just kind of ge very generic and it has crossbones on it. Um, and then um, <laughs> here's a picture of the track that I'm showing now. Um, th this one has a lot of different pieces to Someone's it. Obviously. Cat in there. <laughs> yeah. There's a random cat in there. Um, so this has a lot of different pieces. You start off um, going this one, straight. Yeah. This one's missing the start finish where the, the, uh, the little wall comes down on well, you. It's actually, yeah. it's not on the track, oh, but it's, it's, there. Okay, it's sitting it. right there. Next to the yeah. track. Next so it does have track. a start finish. So you, when you start, both cars just go, they go around a bend and then go around this loop-de-loop -loop that is supposed to be, have a waterfall that comes through it, right? So they mm -hmm. run through the blue track that's got the waterfall um, and it's and it's also going up. So it's getting pulled up to the second the second level and it goes straight and it goes into the canyon. The canyon doors open as it goes into them, like they push it open. The canyon doors say, keep out. Um, all of the backdrops like a, are uh, just... Like mine, yeah. Yeah, all the backdrops are just cardboard. <clears throat> um, you So you go through that little door um, and then you come out the other side of the canyon and you start to go across a bridge. Um, actually, looking at this one, it doesn't look like they put the bridge in the right spot. Um, no, it's kind of awkward. Over. <laughs> yeah, it needs to be moved over a little bit. Um, but the bridge is a, it's like a little wobbly area um, that you would then go through. And then you come around the corner and go underneath the uh, the wow. waterfall. And then actually, this is the part that I was, I was confused about. So you don't crisscross like I thought you did. But you, no, the, this one the just track <laughs> moves in and then moves back out to their normal levels. So if yeah, you were you right at the same time, time yeah, if you were right beside each other, one of you is getting knocked off, if not both yeah. of you. So, 
Um, I did have that mixed up. I, I thought I, I was thinking it was Chris crisscross, but it's been a, a decade or so yeah, since so. we played with this. So, oh yeah, so Michael's got it taken apart there, and yeah, it is so it's the red. It's the, the inside red of his red. Now that's model paint, right? Um, that's what it looks like. Yeah, it looks like it's the glossy. Yeah, I bet it is model paint. So we had some models back then too. Or it's glossy. Uh, so they just spray paint and. I'm gonna. Well, it's not spray paint because not everything's painted. It's just okay. So I'm gonna jump out on a and ledge and say I might have done that. There's the motor part. <laughs> I did paint a couple different Dale Earnhardt models when I was, you know, that would have been late '90s, early 2000s. Um, so there's a there's a chance that that was me. Um, not not gonna lie. Um, I also have this. I want to show this. So as we kind of talk about it, I'm just going to run through this. So this is the, um, if you're watching, this is the track running through that we had. So it just runs through it. Um, oh, I forgot about the lights. Are there lights on it, Michael? Do the lights light up? He doesn't know because he doesn't have electricity to it. <laughs> oh, and oh, I forgot. There's also a barrel. Yeah, there's there's lights by. on the headlights there. Yeah, I forgot okay. my mic was muted, but yeah, there's, there's lights on the headlights. Yeah. There's a barrel that you run through um and like it goes from side to side so if you hit it on one side it's just going to knock it over to the other side now it's just on a little pivot oh yeah i forgot about the TNT that's barrel right there. yeah that's gonna yeah it's not going to do anything unless you yeah. hit it right after the other person hits it at that point it could then cause some cause some damage but that's about it so um now we don't know Obviously, our parents got these for us. We don't know how much they paid for it. But uh, I did do some research on this one um, and could, and found it in a couple different spots on eBay. Um, the best one was about 100 bucks, um, but it was used, obviously. Um, now, I found a unused one that was still wrapped in all of its pieces. It didn't have the original box, but all the pieces were all still wrapped up and like, in their packaging um, and it sold for about 135. Um, so not terribly bad, honestly, for, um, for getting into, I guess I would say a beginner slot car type type track. Um, I know there's professional slot car tracks out there. Um, yeah. There's, there's one in Mesquite that John mentioned <clears throat> earlier that I've seen. Um, I've never been there, but I'd seen it. So, yeah, I remember seeing that. We used to see that going to to granddad's up there in yeah. Mesquite. I, I don't think it's still there anymore, but I remember going. It's, it's still in Mesquite. I think they moved from where they, they originally moved. were because okay. I looked them up. And I was like, I want to see if anything's close to us. And yeah, like I'm looking at their. They've got pictures with people with masks on now, so you know they're still doing okay. It. So it's yeah, still, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, but they've got some pretty big tracks. They've got a. Uh, drag racing strip for them. Yeah. So, <laughs> now, I was hoping they come on their stuff looking at it. I was hoping they had some speeds, but I haven't found anything that has speed on it yet. Now, the, Andrew, uh, oh, yeah, going, going back to the, the pricing, mm -hmm. um, I do have prices of the, the original Lionel ones from the 1910s, okay. from 1912 to 15. Uh, they sold in their catalog. From 12, 1912 to 1910, these things sold between seven dollars and fifty cents to eighteen dollars. Okay, so so <clears throat> that was a lot of money back then. So how much? Seven dollars and fifty cents up to eighteen dollars. So seven dollars and fifty cents in nineteen twelve. Nineteen twelve is going to be two hundred and four dollars today. Okay. And you said eighteen dollars. Eighteen dollars was the high end one. That's four hundred ninety one dollars today. Okay. So you're looking, there's, those would be probably a little more expensive um, than what some of them do today, because you're looking at maybe a hundred bucks, but you know, 200 to 500 bucks back then, you know? Well, these, I, like I said, these, these racers, like John said at that, the place there in Mesquite, uh, I mean, they, they put a lot of money in these things. They uh, do. It's just like, it's just like RC racing. Um, they, they, and get people go and build their own RC cars and trucks like that. They put there's a lot of money into, and there's thousands of dollars in those things. Well, I one of actually the things is just the play value on this because you actually interact with this, you yeah, kind of like yeah, video games and stuff. You're doing something instead of just sitting there watching it, or you know, so you can wind up a car and let it go, or you can get one of these and 
everybody there, you know, trying to manipulate the car to go what you want to and beat the other person. So yeah, the play I mean, value is what really made a take head, off. Head to head competition, you know. So and like I'm that not, one we had had the, the part where it comes together and you can crash each other out or whatever. Right. That's that's the fun part of it. That's yeah. the fun part. So I'm gonna share this as we kind of talk. We just continue to talk over this um, this video. So um, this happens to be a video of a very expensive track that was put together um, for a lot of competition. Oh, yeah. It's a it's a three by three or it's a three three wide track. Um, they spent about three hundred thousand on this thing. It's a beautiful track. It's got the scenery. It's like a model train kind of right. kind of set with you know a slot car track set in the middle of it um and that's the thing about this like this is not just it can be something small you can get a small one like we had um and then take that and completely upgrade it now an interesting thing about this this is this is all custom built because you notice there's nothing inside of this track that you put these together these are built into the road yeah really. this here is is looks like it's modeled after a uh, a real track, probably a Grand Prix track or F1 track. Probably. Um, I think it's cars they have racing on there, the Ferraris and the, um, <clears throat> and the, most That's of them are Ferraris looks like but there's, there. yeah, they're, they're mostly Grand Prix racing. So, uh, it, and it's got the, this track here, you know, it's got all the buildings and it's got the curves and stuff. I think this is, a, it, it reminds me of a similar track over in, uh, over in, uh, um, Europe over there. Um, Cause you got all the, the sponsorships on the walls. You got foster yeah. beer, you got yeah. Jaguar, you got Marlboro, Texaco. <laughs> yeah. And, and all that Castro BP. Uh, so you've got all those different, um, different sponsors. So this, this looks like a grand prix race that uh, probably formula one cars would race on now. Right. And so one reason why I wanted to show this is I happen oh. to know oh. um, just from, yeah. A little bit of oh, that, that was that was a video it like it of a Porsche. It was yeah. a Porsche crash there. Yeah. <laughs> so just from listening to a couple of the podcasts, or whatever, I know that NASCAR drivers really got into this. I don't know if there may be some that still do it, but they got into it in the early two thousands, um, and they were spending a lot of money on on the cars, and they would go to the tracks and a bunch of the tracks that they were that they were racing on, like the actual NASCAR tracks. Would people would start to pop up the um, the places around the racetracks. And then, so in their spare time, they could all go over and do some slot car racing. Um, so you could spend a pretty penny on these and, you know, you can get anywhere from like a small track, like we had to, um, about a six, seven wide track and have people run. So, um, it gives you a lot of fun, like the interaction you're trying to just beat the person that you're going with. Um, for the most part, you're both going to stay on the track. You could just give it as much power as you want, but you have to be able to, when you start to get to these speeds, you have to be able to pull your speed back so that you take a corner and you don't wipe out. Right. You know, well, Andrew, you were talking about how all the NASCAR and everything, but uh, Skeletrics actually signed uh, the Formula One world champion back in 1964, Jim Clark, uh, to help push the brand. Oh wow! And push this, push this out. So I mean, they were actually getting these guys to push this back then and make it to where people wanted to do it. <clears throat> so there's there's a lot of fun with slot cars. I I, I wouldn't yeah, mind they, grabbing a track myself now and having. They make, um, you know, I'm big. You know, I've got uh, Auto World uh, diecast is is one of the big things I collect here. Um, and but they do Auto World Round Two is the parent company of them. Um, they do uh, the slot cars and stuff as well. Um, they um, they make everything from, you know, you got classic <clears throat> classic cars from the 50s all the way up to uh, up to today's like Nissans and and stuff like that, uh, Toyotas and stuff. And then in between that, it's all different kind of race cars. They have the NASCAR license so they've got stock cars um they've got uh, grand prix racing racer cars um there's there's trucks um you've got uh, just about anything you can think of like indie cars um just about any kind of car that you it, that's out there they, they make a slot car for it so so right. if you want yeah. like a casual 
uh, if you want like a, a Friday night race with your Toyotas and Nissans and, and Mitsubishis and stuff, you can do that. Or you can go back to the sixties and race your, your super birds and your, 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 um, uh, uh, Chevelles and your Corvettes and your, your Camaros, you can race those, or you can, you can get your, your 57 Chevys or your, your, uh, Impalas and stuff like that. They have all different kinds of, uh, of cars out there that you can put on there. And like I said, they do come in different, different scales. Um, you know, all the way from like the HO, um, and OO scales, to all the way up to the 124 scale uh, cars uh, and everything in between. So there's different scales, different models. Um, like I said, there's different different kind of motors. If you want a fast motor, if you just want a motor to just to play with, um, or you know, and then you got your racing motors. Your tires are all different. I mean, you got all different kinds of things to to customize these things to make them make them however you want them. So and usually. Uh, a lot on the, <clears throat> I know most of them, but I know Auto World because I'm more familiar with them. The body will come off the motor and you can put a new body. You can go buy just, just plain blank bodies and paint them up yourself. Um, however you want to do it. But, yeah. So this also, you were talking the racing stuff and everything, but I mean, they have pro championship races. like, uh, And it's just crazy how far this goes. This isn't just, you know, something that we can do here at the house with the small tracks like we used to have uh but or going to these places and playing with them but they actually have championship races you know big time people out there with this stuff if you're into it and it's crazy because uh i think the first one was held in what 1964 65 and over in london but it just progresses and now they're all over the place and they still have these races and you can go from just a hobby person at home to a pro traveling the world racing slot cars. <laughs> yeah. So, and these, these actually, this is not something we typically do, but um, because slot cars go so far back, um, the, the newer like wave of not, they're, they're not slot cars. They are a lot based off of slot cars, but they are somewhat magnetic type cars. Mm -hmm. um, and Anki, I think it's, I think it's pronounced Anki. Um, I know this all happened like a few years ago when iPhones were really the rave on being able to control things. Um, so you could get these slot cars, you can attach it, or it's not a slot car, you get this little car, attach it to your um, iPhone and be able to race it on a track that is all magnetic kind of based and it's going to stick around there. But you could actually slide on the track more and have more control over that. So it's yeah. more of that being able to cross back and forth, more of racing as opposed to just you know being on the one slot and hoping that your car engine can go faster than the other one. Um, there's more to it. So those are pretty cool. Um, I always wanted to get one of those, but I don't know if I would have the dexterity to be able to like slide it and <laughs> and everything, you know. So yeah those are similar to uh i know it's like a, i know it's got a track but it's you know, similar to like a radio control car yeah yeah they're very similar to that yeah but they're they're <laughs> they're specifically to the track and i know there's some other things that you can do uh you can get slot cars um with like the fast and the furious they've got their own branded slot cars that you can get um mario kart's a big one you can get those and i think they're actually doing a separate thing that's kind of like this also um but yeah the slot cars are they're pretty awesome Honestly, I wouldn't mind having a track and setting it up and having some fun with it. Yeah, it could be a lot like of fun. Like I said earlier, it's all about the play value yeah. on this because you can interact with it with each other. So yeah. So um, all right, you, I mean, this is a a pretty a pretty short history with this on how they go. I mean, they haven't really besides the engine advancements or the motor advancements on these, there's not a lot of advancements on how they, how they really work, you know? Um, it's, it's, it's pretty basic, you know, they you know, you know the motor, they've gone and updated a few little bit here and there to make them go faster and, and stuff like that. Uh, but it's still all just basic. And it's, it's just a basic uh, motor. I mean, they just put newer, newer parts that don't wear out as quick in there. And yeah, they kind of work a little better and, and, but the basic parts of the slot cars are, are the same, you know? 
I think it's kind of cool when toys can do that. I mean, there's they still, there's no reason to like push something and make it super awesome or crazy when mm -hmm. basic stuff still works and people still like to play with them. Right. And they've so. got so many different brands, you know, different tracks and stuff. All, all the tracks, you got different, the different brands. You can take any brand car and race on any every brand different track. kind of track. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's um, some reason the, the manufacturers throughout the years, they've, <clears throat> they've kind of stuck to that to where, you know, you can take any car and race on anybody's track. So yeah. they're all universal. So is that the only slot out of all those cars you have behind you? Is that the only slot car that you have, Michael? That's the only one I have. Yeah. And I'm surprised I still have it after all these years. I mean, yeah. So, <laughs> since the early nineties. I'm, uh, I'm very surprised you still have it. But and, and you just happen to have it in one of your boxes somewhere. Yeah. I've got a box with miscellaneous uh, brands and this was in there. So just some oddball brands that, that I've got that aren't hot wheel or match box or Johnny lightning or, or auto world. And those, those kind of get thrown into a box and <clears throat> that's uh this was still in that box. Yeah. Well, that's so, awesome that you still have it. You still have that little piece. Um, the only thing is, you know, it's missing the back tire and actually the, 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 the pin that goes in it because you can replace those pins. All these little pieces are replaceable. Like the, the little guy, the little uh, rails on there, you can pull once they get wore out, you can replace it. Uh, but the pin uh, has come out, and I don't know, I, had, I don't know where the pin is. But but like I said, it's replaceable. All the like all the parts, uh, the little magnets and stuff. I mean, you you can take the tires are replaceable once you wear the tires down. Um, yeah, but, you know. it probably wouldn't be much to get that back that one back up and ready to run. <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah. I guess we got to get a remote for it. Well, yeah, no, the remote. Too. Yeah, well, I mean, you have the track, but the, the remote goes towards the track, doesn't it? Right. It actually yeah. connects to the yeah. track. That's right. Um, so, all right. Well, uh, let's uh, let's rank these. We've got a huge list that has to that has to be ranked up against. So, uh, we've all got NES is one and Rainbow Bright is two right now. So, uh, Michael, I'll let Am you. I uh, I'd have to put this. You know, I, I had a lot of fun with Nintendo, but you know, I, I still have to put this at number two behind Nintendo. Um, but it's pretty close to it because I, I really enjoy these these kind of these kind of tracks and cars. Um, I'm a big car guy anyway, so. Um, but yeah, it'll be number two right behind, pretty close second to, to Nintendo. The way you said that, I thought you were about to put it above it. I really <laughs> I did. did. I, I thought you were off on that, didn't I? I thought you were going to put it above it. I was like, wow. <laughs> um, John. Uh, just number two. Just second. number two for you. Okay. Same, I mean, it goes, it's number two for me also. Um, we I had the same situation. That it's, it's right there. Right there is so close to the Nintendo that, yeah. But it's still second to Nintendo. Yeah, I mean, just based off of some of the toys that I know we've got coming up, this may sit pretty high for for all three of us for a while. So yeah. um, we had a lot of fun with this. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks, to mom and dad. Shout out to mom and dad for hooking us up with that track and showing us, you know, this this kind of this kind of stuff because this was uh, loads of fun. And I wish we still had the track um, to play with. So I. Maybe I need to, I just need to get one. That's what I need to do. I need to get one so that I can have some fun with it. Show my kids um, <clears throat> and everything how to have some fun with that. So we don't have a game. Slide it up underneath the bed or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a game this week because uh, like I said, there's not a lot of, I mean, I guess I could have randomly done, you know, champions of slot car races and made you guess <laughs> what car they were racing with or something. I don't know, something like that. But uh, I didn't, I didn't come up with a game. There was just, cause it's, it's so, so this is like such a simple concept that is just awesome. You know, take a little motor, yeah. put a little slot in it or take it, take a track with a slot, take a little car with a, a little pin, put it in there and make it run. Like it's just, it's pretty cool. So um with that you know, a lot of people they take those they take those modeling kits and just if you can't find one you want just take a modeling kit and get your get the motor chassis and just slide that model kit body on top of it and you got your own your homemade yeah, you make your own, own one I, and yeah. there's so many that you can get out there like that's even taking it to the next level like because mm -hmm. you can get almost anything that's out there and you can get them customize them by painting them um I, like I'm pretty sure that I painted that on black. I don't remember. There's, but I customized. There's that a uh, 
there's an auto world set out there you might want andrew it's got the batmobile and it's got there's one with the with the penguin mobile and there's one with uh the joker mobile with it too that, that's that's exactly what i want um now as we're talking about that since we're, we're going to talk about pop culture for a second so you can get these slot cars in pretty much anything um well you said batmobile i i had seen one of those but i didn't know it was a whole set um mm -hmm. yes there yeah. i saw an you, get them, you get them individually too so okay I saw an Ecto one. Um, mm -hmm. I saw a Christine. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think what the other ones that I saw. Um, obviously, I mentioned you can get the <laughs> Fast and Furious, like all the Fast and Furious cars. Um, and you can get Mystery Machine from Scooby Doo. Mystery Machine. Yeah. Um, and you, there's only there's very little of this that actually has to do with aerodynamics. So you can take these and just have fun with them. Pretty much do mm -hmm. anything. So if you've got the right engine or the right motor in it um, and the track's fast enough, Mr. Machine's going to be beating a Batmobile. Who knows? <laughs> so. I mean, the professional racers, they, they do have uh, the aerodynamics and stuff. Down oh, yeah. Too, yeah. But I mean, when you get into those like professional <laughs> tracks, yes, you want the yeah. aerodynamics. But I'm just saying like on a normal track, if you're just going having fun um, and you and your buddies are having fun or whatever, it's not a yeah. whole lot. That's that, that can be. It's not like, um, um, what are the, what do the Boy Scouts do? The Pinewood Derby. It's not like those yeah. where you're just going down and you've got so much aerodynamics and weight that you have to deal with on those, um, mm -hmm. to make sure that you can win. It's not necessarily like that. It's just make sure you've got an engine that's fast enough and everything. So, all right. Anything else I'm going to add before we start to wrap this one? No, I think uh, this is everything I've got wrote down on my notes we've co we've covered. So okay, John. Oh, no, I'm good. You, you gonna go buy you a track today, John? No. <laughs> oh, damn. I was hoping I could come over and play with your track that you're buying today. Um, all right. Well, if you enjoyed listening to us today, just ramble on about slot cars. We've got thirty something other episodes that you can go listen to if, if this is your first time to join us. Um, we enjoy doing this. We like to talk about history. Um, we've got some pretty fun episodes coming up with some pretty, pretty good toy lines. So um, good thing about all of our 30 other episodes, we've spread out um, the big toy lines. So we're going to hit you with some, some random ones that you may have never heard of um, like bug men of insecta. So um, if, if you happen to know what that is and you've never heard our episode, we have a whole episode on it. So um, all right. Well with that, if you, uh, if you're looking for somebody else to listen to, be sure to go check out these other podcasts that, that we kind of partner with a little bit. Um, obviously geek together, uh, the average nerd podcast, the four dorksmen, um, shout out to the four dorksmen, uh, three beers and a mic STS guys, nerdy curious, nerd portraits, uh, movie retakes, the totally rad movie podcast, secondary heroes. Um, the new one, the figure booth, um, figure they're booth. six, seven episodes in, um, and doing a pretty good job. Uh, I listened mm -hmm. to the first couple of their, it's I've listened to all of them. It's, it's really, they've got a lot of good insight in uh, different ways of, uh, you know, like Nate does his photography with them. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, Josh, I think his name Josh, yeah. he, or prime, prime to the first. Prime to the first. He does, um, he, he builds uh, diorama pieces, uh, most notably um, video game console, video game. Yeah. Uh, uh, what do you call them? Um, um. It's not consoles, but like the the my the, mind just went blank on that. The so, arcade, the, the arcade, arcade games, arcade, arcade, arcade games. games. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he does he does that and lots of other little uh, 3D printing type stuff. So he does a really great job on that. I've seen his product and he does pretty cool stuff. Yeah, it's really good. Um, also, be able to go go check out uh, Second Opinion podcast. Um, doing some pretty good stuff over there. And then yeah. if you're ever in the need for some positivity, go check out Sully over on Twitch. Um, he's always doing something fun and, and keeping it going. So, uh, yeah. Uh, John, if, if somebody was trying to find us and they, for some reason, started listening to our podcast 10 minutes in today, uh, where would they catch us? All right. So website, toy rewind podcast.com. Dot com. <laughs> uh, Email us at toyrewindpodcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. Look us up. It's all Toy Rewind Pod. Uh, Facebook and YouTube, Toy Re Rewind Podcast. 
Uh, and then, of course, there's been several bingo squares that I heard going on throughout this uh, podcast. So Are you talking about all the bingo. phone noises? <laughs> uh, podcastbingo.com backslash toy rewind. So, uh, and then, yeah, that's where you can find us. Yeah, check us out. Be sure you follow us. Remember, we will be posting um, the day this drops the final four, or not the final four, the final championship match between our brackets. So get ready to vote on that. It's only going to run. I think that only runs for two days. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so be sure you vote early, and we'll find out out of the first 32 matches that we've had, our 32 toy lines, who – the best one is anybody have a uh, prediction? Um, Transformers. You think Transformers is going to come out on top? Uh, John, yeah. there's some good <laughs> lines there. There, there. I honestly, out of all of the eight that we have left, if uh, any of these eight win it, it wouldn't surprise me. No. So I mean, uh, they're all they're all good. There's not really anything that's that snuck up behind us I mean, the first round there was i think there's one or two that snuck by us we didn't think would win uh but now that we're into the the final eight yeah it just it's uh yeah i think any of them can win it um i think it's going to be legos uh but that's just me um i, I, said, I think it's either going to be transformers or star wars <laughs> star wars has got a heck of a chance I, I, oh, I, that's the thing is like, I think all these do, but I, I think Legos are going to come out um, because we're going to post these. And I have a feeling like we're going to get not just the nerd group that we have here, but as we're posting, I've noticed um, people from outside of that because of hashtags voting a little yeah, bit. Right. So you never know who's going to come out and vote. I think Legos are going to come out and, and win it all. John, who do you think is going to win it? Micro machines. You think micro machines? I think that could be, that's definitely a pretty good chance. Uh, freaking awesome. So. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, this has been the Brothers Newland uh, and Toy Ruin podcast talking about slot cars. And uh, so, on behalf, I got to get to my little button over there. It is. Um, on behalf of uh, the Brothers Newland here at Toy Ruin podcast, play on. You've been listening to the Toy Rewind Podcast. Follow and join in the conversations at toyrewindpodcast.com. 